بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو ای این ٹی فور ڈبل فائیو لیکچر نمبر ٹو آم یور انسٹرکٹر ڈاکٹر آنسر حمید ٹو آر ٹو ڈیز لیکچر از بیسٹ آن دی نیچر آف ڈسکرپشن آف لینگویج اف یو ریمبر ان ما لیکچر نمبر ون آئی گیو یو آ ڈیٹیلڈ انٹروڈکشن اباؤٹ مائی ڈسپلن وٹ لینگویسٹکس از وٹ لینگویسٹکس از ناٹ and what are the different disciplines inside linguistics and in that lecture I also mentioned that when we say that linguistics is a scientific study of languages it means we are very much concerned about the word language now this word language is quite complicated controversial with so many definitions with so many functions and with so many forms for language different and with 7000 languages in the world according to UNESCO report we have so many different aspects of different languages but I would like to start with the first aspect of language because before telling you what language is I must tell you that how the, this language, this tool of language is only prescribed to humans or it is considered that language is only a gift for human beings. Yes, but at the same time some psychologists and linguists they propose an idea that animals they can also talk so there is a controversy between uh, who can use a language who can be a language user whether the humans they are the only users of this language tool or there are the other users as well so my today's lecture is based on one of the controversy regarding this language is language restricted to humans whether or not this language is something that is possessed by other creatures in this world. So language, what is the controversy? What does make language controversial is language is only human capacity. Majority of the linguists and even the common man, he or she believes that language is something which is possessed by human beings as human being I can speak a language but all other species of the world all other the living organisms in this world they are not able to produce language this is the one side but at the same time there are some other linguists and psychologists who believe that animals do communicate but whether their communication is also a language whether we can regard their communication process as a language this is the controversy between human communication versus animal communication which sort of communication we will call a language and why animal communication cannot be called cannot be recorded as a language my lecture would be primarily based on the book the articulate mammal by Jean Edison chapter number two can animals talk so majority of the features that I will discuss today to make this distinction clear between human communication and animal communication I would quote I would quote Edison so to start with this controversy I have chosen some short poems from again from the book of Edison to see that to explain that how this controversy actually started for example I would like to read this small beautiful poem by Robert Desnos an aunt who can speak French Japanese and Greek doesn't exist why ever not so again bringing into our consideration that is language is purely human is this things is this something which is only and only specific to human beings look at other small two lines by Walter Lamier and and come quick as you can there's a fish that talks in the frying pan 
so you know this aspect of animals talking is not new because we find this thing happening in stories in movies and I would like to quote many movies which I've seen with my daughter these movies they characterize the portrait the animals as with language the animals in these movies they are the characters acting like human beings and talking like them and then creating a controversy in minds of little children children wonder do animals really talk do they have ability to speak then why this cat on the road or why this do dog outside my house why is barking or why is she is mewing why they are not using language so there are a lot of movies cartoons and stories filled with animals talking using language and then creating a controversy that whether or not these animals they have the ability to speak whether or not they have this skill that is considered to be restricted for humans so this is the topic of discussion for our lecture number two do animals talk according to Edison before starting this issue before discussing this issue we have to consider the two definitions of this word talk talk if talk simply means to utter words ba, fa, ga, la, uttering different sounds and differing words then if it is if you can define it as a talk then in some sense yes animals they can talk because there are certain examples of animals like bud carriers and parrots who can talk like maybe you have seen a parrot in somebody's home talking oh, yes my parrot can talk yes this thing happens and when you see such parrot it can utter few words few sounds and it seems like the replica of human language so if we define language as utterance of words and sounds yes in some sense the animals they can talk but if you talk about the word talk as to use language in a meaningful way that you are not creating you are not producing certain sounds and certain words rather you want to express yourself you want to say something which is meaningful meaningful utterances if you denote the word talk associate the word talk with a meaningful utterances then in the second sense of this meaning we need to discover we need to actually uh, discuss whether or not animals can talk in this second sense so we will today discuss it in detail and we'll getting we'll be getting examples from Edison book that how we can d differentiate between animals and human beings while talking while communicating and what are the features which symbolize which categorize as one group with having language and the other group with a controversy that whether or not they have a language to start with let us compare animal communication system with human language so we are going to start with what language is because if we want to know that language is a possession by human beings or it is also a possession of uh, animals we need to make it clear what language is I would like to quote over here Charles Hockett 1960s he gave certain speech features he actually provided with a list of speech features and mentioned that if any group either human beings or animals they possess all of these features 
then their communication can be regarded as language so in other words these are the features of language to describe the utterances by a particular group as a language we have to see these features what are these features now we will discuss them in detail that on the basis of what grounds on the basis of what features we can describe that we can differentiate between human communication human communication and animal communication my point number one is vocal auditory channel if you know about the vocal yes the way I produce the sound vocal and auditory yes the way I hear the sound this these organs are vocal organs and these organs are the auditory organs the human beings they have proper vocal auditory organs to communicate themselves to communicate their ideas so this way Charles Hockett he provided a feature this this vocal auditory channels or these vo vocal auditory organs they are possessed by human beings so as a result they are able to produce language but is this design feature of a language unique to humans we need to reconsider it because according to these linguists, according to psychologists and according to different researchers who are actually doing researches on animals, they came up with the idea that actually the vocal auditory organs, they are, they are also possessed by animals animals they have also the mouths they also have the tongues they also have the vocal cords maybe and they also have the ears you have observed so many animals around you so you can see they have a proper vocal auditory organs so it means that we cannot say that language is possessed by them because if they have vocal auditory organs maybe vocal auditory organs are not the only condition to possess a language at the same time there is another assumption that vocal auditory organs they are considered as responsible for producing sounds and language but at the same time it has been observed that some animals they produce sounds even without having any vocal auditory organ consider the example of rattlesnakes they do not possess any vocal auditory organ at all or uh, the woody woodpeckers you have seen them a lot of times in cartoon so they also don't have any proper vocal auditory organ but they still are able to produce sounds so we cannot uh, condition that vocal auditory organs they are the only means to produce language this is also exemplified with in ex human beings case for example it has been observed that in human communication vocal auditory organs they are important but not that much important that we cannot condition that if a human being is not possessing any vocal auditory organ or maybe if uh, these vocal auditory organs gets damaged so we cannot say that he or she won't be able to produce any sound or language actually it has happened it has been observed that patients with their vocal cords removed because of certain reasons or diseases or certain infection they were still able to communicate so it means that vocal auditory organs are not the only condition because vocal auditory organs they are possessed by human beings they are also possessed by some of the animals so this is the one of the design feature of language which is possessed by both groups humans as well as animals now we will move towards the next design feature arbitrariness what is arbitrariness arbitrariness means that there is no connection between the form and its meaning if you remember the word of saussure according to him there is no one-to-one -one link between signifier and signified 
if I say tree then automatically an image of tree appears in my mind but for a speaker person who does not know English and he or she only knows Urdu if I say word tree in front of him or her do you think he or she will recognize it no because the words and their meanings they are not interlinked they are just arbitrary symbols and human languages they use the neutral symbols if I say a word dog the the animal dog is itself not associated with the word dog because if it would happen then in all languages of the world the same dog the same animal with four legs would be called dog but it does not happen because in every languages of the world there are different words for the same four legged animal take the example of our own language Urdu we will call it a kutta not a dog if you are a German you will call it in hunt if you are speaking Latin you will call it canes if you are speaking Greek you will call it Rodin so see in all languages of the world there are different words for the same animal so this way we can say that words and their meanings or the symbols and their associations signs and signifies they have no link between each other and this arbitrariness is a distinctive feature of language in language arbitrariness feature is commonly found in all sorts of word for all sorts of word yes we can say that okay the words they do not have any link but at the same time I would like to mention exceptions yes onomatopoeic words if you are familiar with this word onomatopoeic words are v uh, words in which there is a relationship between the symbols and their meanings B when I say there is a bird a small little insect B then automatically the word B is connected with the sound that a B utters so there is a one-to-one -one relationship similarly bang now this word bang something happens terrible and you say bang so this happens because something bang happens so say you use the word bang so there is a relationship but to put it there are only a small list of onomatopoeic words in all languages of the world majority of the words in all of the languages they are not onomatopoeic so they have this feature arbitrariness there is no one-to-one -one relationship between the symbols and their meanings so now the question is is arbitrariness is unique to human language we have to consider it according to Edison because some researches they have proved that this arbitrariness it is not unique to human language because there is certain examples there are certain examples of few of the animals where we can see that arbitrariness is an aspect of animals communication as well take the example of crab a crab when it wishes to extreme to convey extreme aggression will extend a large claw okay a uh, one claw of the crab it would extend it beyond the other uh, uh, sorry legs so this way he is or it is showing its aggression similarly girls girls indicate aggression by turning away from their opponent if they are angry from someone they would turn their back and then they would uproot beakfuls of grass this way they show their aggression so you see that their aggression word is not at all associated with their actions so this way we can say that arbitrariness is found is a feature also common to animals communication it is not a unique aspect of human communication 
The next design feature that was proposed by Charles Hockett was semanticity. Semanticity is the use of words to mean or to refer to an object and action. For example, when I say I'm sitting on a chair, so with a chair I have certain meanings. What is a chair? It is a kind of furniture. Yes, it is a kind of furniture on which you sit on. And then it has four legs. And in some cases, the furniture, they have the backs and they have two arms as well. So with, this with the word chair, I have the semantic meanings associated to this word chair. But on the other hand, if I take the example of animals, when the same parrot, if I teach my parrot to say word chair, okay, he would utter it, word chair. But is he referring to the same object I am referring to? Or he is just imitating me? Because this is, this is our difference. That animals, when they say something, it is not yet proved that do or do not, they mean the same thing. If an animal, if I teach my parrot to say table, but for me or for you, a tab with the table, you have certain ideas in your mind. But maybe the parrot, it doesn't have any ideas related to it. But again, some controversies are there because there are some writers and s some researchers who claim that semanticity is also a feature of human animals communication as well. So now how they prove it? They give certain examples, as you can say, the example of vervet monkeys. Now what happens with these vervet monkeys? Whenever they want to show or whenever they want to express their feelings about danger, they have different kinds of sounds for different kind of dangers. If they are observing a snake, a different enemy, they will utter a different sound. Then if they would see a leopard, they would utter a different sound. So you know what is happening that for every kind of enemy, for every kind of danger, they have different words, they have different sounds. So they, they, their uh, communication system is quite interesting. Their communication of actually alarms, alarm calls we call, call it, is quite interesting. Now. Uh, let's see on some of the examples. Now these are the some of the types by which the vervet monkeys they make alarm calls. When they say a, see a snake, when a vervet monkey sees a snake, it gives one call and to make other realize the same danger. And then other members of the troop, they would identify it and they would run away. And what they would do? They would stand on their hind legs. So this thing shows that they understand that their partner, the other vervet mon monkey who is signaling, meant to be a snake. So they identify that danger call as a call for snake. Similarly, if a monkey, a vervet monkey, sees a leopard, then what happens? He utters a different kind of sound. Quite strange, but it happens. And when, as soon as he utters that different kind of sound, all other members of the troop, immediately they climb up the trees. So, it communicates the idea that they realize that the, their partner monkey is indicating what kind of danger. So it means they have a proper communication. They are providing the meanings. They are indicating their types of danger through three different symbols. And every symbol, every alarm call, every sound that vervet monkey will produce have different meanings. Type 3, if a vervet monkey sees a hawk, he produces a totally different kind of sound. And as soon as all other members of the troop, they would hear this sound, what they will do? 
they will quickly try, climb up the trees and then they would stay near the trunk. And staying near the trunk shows that they are understanding that their partner monkey is telling them that there is a hog in surrounding. Quite interesting, but it happens and it has been observed in vervet monkeys. So this shows that the vervet monkeys, they have, they have this feature of semanticity in their communication because whenever they utter a different sound, it is meant to be something different and is communicated as something different to all other members of his group. But again the question arises that vervet monkeys are the only examples for this kind of semanticity. This kind of feature has not been so far found in all other animals. So maybe it is a case of vervet monkeys where we can find this feature of semanticity but not in the other animals. So to some extent we can say that semanticity is a feature that is mean more particularly related with human communication and to only with few cases with um, animals communication as well. Now our next point is displacement. Displacement is that you use language to say about people, to say about something that is not around you, meaning that thing is at a distance. For example, I'm sitting here in front of you people, but if I'm talking about my daughter at home, then I can talk, my daughter was wearing a red frock today. So I can talk about a person or an object which is very far away from me right now. This is the displacement feature of the language. So this way we can say that displacement is when we talk about abstract objects and events and about all those objects and events and people which are not around us. Now the question is, is this feature of displacement is unique to human beings? In animal communication, they, it has been established that they cannot speak about the things which are not around them. But again there is an interesting exception. And that interesting exception is of the example of bees. You have maybe heard about the bees that they have different kinds of dances to say to mean different things. Actually when these bees they work in the groups they have certain signals to communicate with each other. And what is the nature of their signals is the dance. They make certain movements to convey different kinds of messages. For example, if they want to inform their other partner bees about the location of a hive, then they would have a round dance. And if they would say that a nectar is close to the hive, they would be having a waggle dance. So in waggle dance, she wiggles her tail from side to side. So this way, they are having two different kinds of dances to convey two different kinds of meanings, which are interestingly understood by their members. You can observe with the help of this picture. Look at the two different types of movements made by the bees. Figure one, round dance, when they are moving their bodies in a round shape. And the second one figure, you can see that they are having a waggle dance. And the both pictures make it clear that they are, these are the two different types of movements. And these are the two different types of dances. And interestingly, they, these both movements convey two different meanings. So this way we can say that the bees they can talk about the things which are near, not near them. For example, the, by these two dances they are communicating the idea of a hive which is not in front of them but is around them. So they are communicating the idea of displacement. But again, we cannot say that 
a bee, if she is making two or three or four sorts of dances to communicate this idea of displacement, whether all the time it is able to describe that displacement, whether all the time a bee is able to talk about the things which are not around it, not possible. I think not have been proved so far as well. There are only 10 or 15 ways in which she can convey the message about the things which are not around it. But again, the researchers have found that the bees, they can communicate about the things which are within the distance of 10 meters around them. And if something is located outside that distance of 10 meters, they cannot communicate about it. So again, this idea of displacement is quite restricted for animal communication. To some extent, yes, we can say that yes, this displacement feature is basically a feature of human language and in very few cases we can relate it with animal communication but again it means the, the, the evidences are not that much available. So we can relate this idea of displacement with human communication. Our next design feature of language is duality or double articulation. In fact, our human language, it is structured, it is designed in such a way that it has two layers of meanings. The basic units of speech and the meanings which emerge when we combine them. The basic units of speech, you call them phoneme. For example, if I individually utter three words, three phonemes, P, I, G. These are three different phonemes. But when I combine them, what I will get? Pig, a word. So as P, I and G, they are the three different phonemes and they don't have any meaning. But when I combine them, this is the second layer where I get a meaning. A pig, I mean an animal. So in fact, in human languages, we have two layers of meanings. And this feature is known as duality. Now the question is, is this duality of patterning unique to human communication? Again, some examples are there provided by some researchers that birds as you can see, the birds, the singing birds, or the dancing or the singing birds when they sing, it has been found that when the birds sing, they also have the ability to sing in duets. As it has been proposed by different researchers that the birds, they can sing duets. So it means they have also these two layers of meaning when they produce the individual notes, these individual notes are meaningless. And when they combine these notes, they produce the meaningful musical sounds. So this way, we can say that this duality is also a feature of bird songs. So not again, nor, um, again controversy that this feature of duality is not particularly or solely related to human language. It is also a future of human language. Now, what is the next design feature? Creativity. Creativity, productivity, it means to create a number of insta uh, sounds or number of words or number of sentences without having any restriction. And you know, right from the very beginning of this slide, I will say creativity is only a human process. Yes, you also believe this. Because as human beings, we are able to produce hundreds of sentences, hundreds of sentences which are standard, hundreds of sentences which are never heard before. We can utter the novel utterances. We can say anything in any length. So this way, as human beings, our language is more productive. Our language is creative. For example, 
take an example of a longest example. My mom said that Mary thinks that Bell is aware of the fact that what I found in his room under the carpet in a tiny box under a symbol of a rose was a Christmas present for Sue, which she asked for in her letter to Santa Claus. So look at the length of my sentence how long sentence this is and again there is no restriction according to the grammar of this language English language there is no restriction that how much long sentence you can produce as long as your sentence is meaningful grammatically correct you can produce a sentence of any length so this way we are more protective productive Another aspect of this related to creativity is recursion. Recursion is that when a linguist unit, linguistic unit, for example, sentence or a word in a sentence, can contain a smaller linguistic unit of the same time again and again. For example, John said that Mary said that Aisha said that Helen said that Tropic said. So I can quote more and more and more people with this word said and making one sentence and there is no restriction on it. So again the human language it has this feature of creativity and productivity and very clearly it is a feature of only and only human language because so far it has been never observed in animal in any of the animals group or birds group that they can produce a lengthy a number of sentences together conveying so many messages messages together or uttering some novel utterances mean their language is pre-planned their language is already there which we will discuss later that langu their language is somehow innate as well so this way this creativity feature is only and only related to human language our next design feature is cultural transmission as it is believed that language is a important aspect of a culture and it is something which is transferred from generations to generations and with the help of language we are not only transferring a mode of communication to our next generation but a whole culture so what we do with the help of a language we transmit our culture to our next generations on the other hand in animals and birds language is believed to be innate yes many researches they have proved that language or the or i must not say it as a language rather the human communication it is creative culturally transmitted whereas the animals communication is not uh, creative it is not something which is transmitted from one generation to end next generation rather it is innate for example if a child is brought up in isolation from all the human beings it has been observed that he or she would not acquire a language so it is proved that language by human beings is learned it is being a process that is acquired this is something which is acquired it is not our mental ability to produce a language as soon as we are born we start producing a language no we learn it on the other hand the animals in the cases of animals and birds they have this language with them and it has been uh, proved that if a bird it is kept in isolation from all other birds it will still be able to produce certain notes so the fact is the thing that has been proved is this that language is innate there no need there is no need in animals to learn a language they have their language they have this mode of communication with them so this way we can say this cultural transmission process is only an aspect of human language our next factor is discreteness language consists of isolated items and now i'm talking about human language for example look at the sentence two birds sneezed now there are three sounds two 
birds sneezed. If you look at the board as well, if I morphologically isolate these three items, then there are three words. Two, bird with sa indication of plural, sneeze and ed as indication of form of verb. And if I analyze the syntax, two birds, subject, sneezed is the verb. So we have these isolated units in human language. Whereas in animals language and in birds communication system, this discreteness factor has not been found so far. Our next design feature is structure dependence. It is said that human language, it has a proper structure and it depends upon its structure. So human language is, in other words, is structure dependent. We have proper rules, we have proper set patterns to organize our thoughts. For example, I, if I say, colorless ideas sleep, now what is the meaning of this sentence? no meaning though the sentence is grammatically correct but there is no meaning but and if I say ideas green furiously bingal so what is meant by this nothing because if I want to mean something if I want to convey some meaningful expression then I have to arrange these words in a proper grammatical order sneezed birds too is incorrect two birds sneezed is a proper grammatical pattern because in for example in English there should be subject and then there should be a verb and then after verb we can have an object I presented him a gift so now I subject presented verb a gift object so there is a sequence a gift I presented is incorrect because it is not following certain grammatical rules so this way we can see that human language it is structure dependent we whenever we say something we mean something we have to organize our language I gave a carrot to a donkey. Now simply a simple statement, a simple active voice. But if I say a donkey was given a carrot, you know it, it is a passive. Now the object subject position has been changed. So this way we can say the human language, it has proper unique structure and in order to utter certain ideas, in order to uh, communicate our thoughts, our feelings within a certain language, we have to learn the rules and organizational patterns of that language. On the other hand, the animals, they don't have this uh, feature. A next feature, very interesting, prevarication, yes, as human beings we can lie. This is an aspect of which is restricted to only and only human beings. In human beings, I can say I'm not wearing a purple color, I'm lying, yes I'm wearing. But in animal communication, they don't have any such idea of speaking a lie. So they don't have this feature of prevarication. Medium transferability. When we speak, we can change our mode of sp uh, communication. I'm talking to you, but at the same time, if I don't want to talk to you, I would start writing over here on the board. So I can shift, I can change my mode of communication from speaking to writing. But in animals, it cannot happen. They have only the spoken ability, the spoken ability to communicate themselves, but no uh, written medium is available to them. Reflexiveness. We use language to talk about language. Yes, right now, as a linguist, I'm talking about language about the human language, about the animal's language, about the nature of language and features of language, about so many things. But on the other hand, the animals, they do not have at all this ability to talk about language. 
there are no linguists in animals group there are no linguists in bird groups rather it is only an um, only human capability human capacity to talk about such things so reflexivity or reflexiveness is the feature only linked with human communication the next feature by hockett is turn taking turn taking by word turn taking i mean that whereas human beings when we speak we speak in turns it is not that when two people are talking they are mean all the time talking and one is speaking and the other is speaking and who is listening then to listen to someone we say something and then we wait the other person says something and then he or she waits and i will say something so this way in human language or in human beings we have this turn taking procedure and for example hello john what are you doing here now the the first person he would pause when well, i'm looking for a workshop around the listener now his turn and he would say oh there is one on your left side so this way one speaker then the turn of the other speaker the second speaker and then the turn of the other speaker and we take it granted that whenever we speak whenever we communicate with each other we take turns but on the other hand uh, in animals in majority of the animals they do not have this concept yes but in birds they are certain cases where the some of these birds they can sing in duets so this way mean somehow the concept of turn taking is there in animals communication as well uh, so we cannot restrict this design feature as a, a part of human language human communication rather it is a part of any communal communication as well to some extent stimulus freedom we can say whatever we like there is no restriction when you will ask me something what color do you like you do not expect at all to say that i would say red if you expect red it doesn't mean that i am going to say red maybe i would say black i would say white i would say green i would say blue i have a freedom i have a freedom to respond to give you a response in any way i am not restricted to provide you with stimulus in the way you are expecting actually as human beings as the aspect of human communication the stimulus freedom it provides us with a chance with a freedom to say anything on the other hand in animals you do not expect this stimulus freedom aspect at all because they do not have they have certain set sets of symbols and sounds which are already with them but and they do not uh, communicate beyond that sets I means so far it has been observed but in future any research can come with anything so i am again putting a question mark next learn ability a human beings they have the ability to learn different number of human languages for example as a multilingual living in pakistan i can speak my mother tongue punjabi i can speak urdu at the same time i can speak english so i have the ability to learn any number of human languages there is no restriction according to a linguistics research a child can learn around 15 languages uh, in the early stages easily on the other hand this feature of learnability is not possible in animals mean there are certain researches in which it is happening that people they are trying I mean they are trying their level best to teach language to animals for example there were a group of scientists who tried to teach apes the normal human language but they failed because they could not make apes to utter the way uh, to utter the sound the way human beings produce so then they introduced a new system of language communication they introduced an asl 
which is known as American Sign Language. Sign Language in which you do not say certain thing rather you communicate with the help of certain symbols rather with the uh, with the help of certain gestures and body movements so now they are trying to teach language to these apes in the form of science look at this picture a man trying to teach an ape a sign language then they do this and you will say you would be meant something uh, now I will tell you one of the most uh, famous experiments. There was a gorilla or a ape named as Coco. A person was owning uh, it and he tried his best to teach that ape the sign language. But what happened at the end? If that ape has learned the sign language, does it mean that he has acquired the language? No, we cannot say. Because by language, we not only mean this sign language, we mean much beyond that and much more than that. So this is quite controversial. We cannot say that when we are teaching a language in form of signs or in form of sounds or whatever form to an animal, then we, he or she, or sorry, it is gaining the proper structure of that language, a proper understanding of that language, and whether or not he or she is going to acquire the proper function, proper knowledge about the functions of language, that at what time, he has to use a certain symbol or a certain sound so this way we can say that this is quite controversial this learnability feature is particularly an aspect of human communication but still um, we cannot say that uh, this thing would never happen maybe in future there are still possibilities chances question marks are there but with this feature of learnability, I came up with very interesting example that I would like to share of Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky, an MIT linguist, whose theory that language is innate, because he was the one, he lingu he's one of the major linguists who believed that in humans the language is also innate, or there are certain features of the language that are innate. Though this theory is quite controversial, there are so many criticisms, there are so many theories against it and in favor of it, so we are not sure about it. But this person, when he said this, Somebody asked is, humans can fly about 30 feet. That's what they do in Olympics. You know, the gymnastics, the acrobats, what they're doing. For a 30 to 40 seconds, they are just, they are in the air. So can we call them that they are flying? Or can we call them that they are birds? So what the Noam Chomsky answered? The question is totally meaningless so when we say that if a person is performing an acrobatic performance then is he if he is in the air for 30 seconds he is not flying it's not flying flying is something else which is purely associated to birds so this way we cannot associate that if an ape or an animal is able to produce certain sounds or certain signs uh, particular to human language so we can we can can we say that is that a language that is quite controversial i hope you have a better understanding of so far that how human communication is quite different from animal communication if i provide you a recap of my lecture animal communications they have certain features which are associated with human communication but animals they do have this for example sound production ability the presence of vocal chords the presence of uh, this arbitrariness and duality features so there are certain features which are present in human animals communication but on the other hand there are so many features which are not present for example displacement structure dependence stimulus freedom these are the things which are not at all present in animal communication so if Hockett he says that we can call a cyst of system as a language if he is meeting all these 15 design features then 
on these grounds yes we can say that language is only a human capacity language is something specific to humans so we can call human communication as language but not the animals communication they actually have certain ways to communicate but that ways of communication that mode of communication we cannot call it a language so there is the end of this lecture inshallah in our next lecture we are going to talk about um, certain more aspects of the language about the levels about its functions about its nature so inshallah see you soon next week allah hafiz